Hi. Hello. We are live and kicking off this Creative Careers panel um, titled Tipping the Scale, Maximizing Resources at Small to Mid-Size Theater Companies. Oh, looking here. Hello. <laughs> Okay, let's get started. Um, my name is SK Karastas. I am a social justice theater artist, organizer, and educator based in the Bay Area. And I have three really awesome small to mid-sized theater leaders with me, one in person and two via online. Um, and, you know, I think lots of viewers watching via the internet too. It's a little surreal, but, you know, here we are. We're just going to roll with it. Um, yeah, so why don't I, we take a moment and just have each of the panelists introduce themselves, and then I'll do some logistics, and we'll jump into the conversation. Cool. I'm going to start um, with Mina Marita. If you could just say your uh, name, title in theater company, and your preferred gender pronouns. I forgot to name mine. Mine are they and them. Hi, I'm Mina Morita. I'm the artistic director for Crowded Fire Theater here in San Francisco, um, and I prefer gender pronouns she, her, hers. Awesome. Let's uh, try David Lozano. Are you there? Here I am. Hello, all. Uh, my name is David Lozano. I am the executive artistic director of Academy of Theater Company in Dallas, and my gender preferred gender pronoun is. Is there anything else? Yeah, I'm so sorry, David. You cut out right as you said my preferred gender pronoun. Will you mind just repeating that for us? Um, I may need to find a better situation here. I need to move around a little bit. Um, okay, all right, that's he, cool. Him and Got it. Is there anything else? No, that's it, that's it. Um, great, thank you for that. Will Davis, same same intro for you, please. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Will Davis, and I am the new artistic director at American Theatre Company in Chicago. Um, uh, I use he and him as my pronouns, and that's about it. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, such a pleasure and honor to be here with the three of you. Super exciting. Um, before we get started, just a special thanks to Am American Express and the Bay Tree Fund for supporting this program. Uh, shout out to HowlRound. And um, huge thank you to Will and Mina and David for the work that you all do running these companies. Thank you. Uh, here's how it's going to go, flow of combo. I'll, I'm going to give a little introduction, context, some thoughts, and then um, I have a couple key questions that um, panelists are going to answer, and I'd love to make room for folks to respond to each other after the questions. Would love to just get into discussion as soon as possible. Um, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll go with that. Oh, and then later in the conversation, I think we're going to take some questions for, uh, from viewers from the internet. Um, if you'd like to pose one, just hashtag creative careers. And um, yeah, I think maybe like three-fourths through the combo, we'll, we'll see about those questions. Awesome. So uh, yeah, the title of this, of this panel is Tipping the Scale, Maximizing Resources at Small to Mid-Sized Theater Companies. Um, you know, I was thinking a lot about this word resources last night and over the weekend and what that means and how so often for us to, it just means money and it <laughs> means like someone else's money, you know? Um, and I was inspired to look up the root of the word. Sometimes that kind of gives me some poetic insight into it. And um, so I'd love to share that with <laughs> everyone. I was pretty surprised by what I found. Kind of the oldest root for this word resource is um, surger, which means to rise. Yeah, so surprising, huh? And then the next one was from, uh, I don't know, old French or something, resordre. And that one means to rise again, to rally, to recover. Um, mm. Yeah. And then the latest one I found was from, from French, ressource, whatever. And that means um, a source, a spring. Mm. Can I keep going? Great. Sorry, y'all. Um, yeah. So maybe as more of a poetic start, I just wanted to share that with folks that really sort of 
inspired me mm-hmm. to think differently about this word. Mm-hmm. Um, there seemed to be some sort of rhythm in these meetings, not a static situation. It felt collective and moving in like a cycle, almost like a mm-hmm. breath or the way that we come together and step apart. Um, yeah, it made me think of, of people. Mm-hmm. So on that note, I'd love to kick off the first question. Um, the order that will go is Mina and then Will and David. Um, so here's my first question, right? Folks in uh, small to mid-sized theater companies need to have a fundamentally unique understanding of resources. And uh, in my experience in these types of companies, the word community also tends to mean something deeper than just ticket buyer or audiences. Um, Mina, can you talk about how these ideas of community and resources inform each other at your theater? Yeah, I mean, I think um, we're in a unique time. And if we're going to be doing any kind of work, that the work should have deep meaning and relevance to whether it's community and you know community means many different things whether it's geographic um, artistic community um, whether it's the community that is in most need closest to us or the community that we are serving with the message that is deeply um, invested in in terms of the art we're making Um, so when I think of that I think of that first and we're at Clouded Fire we're really When I think of resource, I think of our tribe, our staff, our board, uh, our resident artists, all who lend their voice and their perspective to the conversation. Um, And so we start with a relational relationship, leadership style, where um, we come from inside and then we um, ask the question of the communities around us, what is the need that you have? And we're getting better at that, I feel like, we should always be stretching to get better at that um, so that we can be responsive to that need. Um, and you know, there's a, a lot of steps we still have to take, whether it's, um, whether it's everything from mentorship to true community relationships, and again, true and authentic are words that have been sort of bandied around, um, but like how do we create a community um, advisory group so that we can start to think about like how are we you know, who is speaking for the need and how are we responding? And then from that, um, where does the art, you know, where does the art come from? And and then also in terms of the art, how is form and innovation pushing the conversation? So it's not just about empathy. It is about empathy, but it's also about interrogation. So it's not just mm-hmm. about the comfort of of what we usually want to hear. It's also about like what's hard for us to hear and why. Um, so I think about that. And then when I think about resource, um, which is definitely people for us because it, yeah. it isn't financial right now for us. We're small. Um, it is about uh, connection. Um, and so the more of our board or staff or resident artists are connected to the folks in the communities we serve, um, and the more that trust is built and that artistic home is built together, that community home is built together, then we can actually hopefully be honing in on what is most necessary. Um, so it means being flexible. It means we also can take risks in some ways that other groups can't mm. because we can say things and, you know, what does, what does failure mean actually right now? Like, <laughs> and who cares? Um, so uh, I think, yeah, I mean, awesome. I kind of like, there's so much connected to this that I went around a little bit, but definitely it's, it's about being flexible. It's about listening. It's deep listening um, and outreach. Um, and it's less about what kind of buildings I'm building, and it's less about um, – how many staff we have, and it's less about transactional relationships, about how many ticket buyers are coming into the theater. It's more about like how deep are we getting into the conversation to interrogate in order to respond to the needs of our communities. Yes, snaps. (laughs) Um, Great, thank you, Mina. 
we're gonna, I'll move on to Will and then we'll make space for folks to respond to each other. Go ahead, Will. Hi. Um, oh goodness, and I can hear myself talking. So I hope, <laughs> I'm gonna roll with it. Um, so uh, I, I love this question that you're asking. Um, and there's, there are um, a couple things that it makes me think about um, that sit, sit next to each other, but then also dovetail. So I think the first thing I wanna say is that uh, when you ask this question about resource and also when you read the, um, you know, the dramaturgy of the word, um, I, I try and make a point, um, you know, I, I'm new, this is my first artistic director gig. So I'm, you know, I'm on a very steep learning curve right now, but, I uh, thus far have made a point in curtain speeches to to talk about resources in terms of a monetary contribution, but also in terms of what else it might mean, and try and throw the throw the door open a little bit um, towards this idea of um, the resource that is community building, the resource that is you know, the brain trust of ideas that can come in the door that, you know, can originate with the staff or can originate with our audience. And we can um, create a larger ecosystem really of resource that, you know, has, has many different inputs, only one of which is cash, you know? And particularly, um, I, think it's, I think it's important to be thinking about um, uh, not just, uh, it's important to be thinking creatively about what it is we need, you know, uh, and also important to be thinking creatively about what our community needs, like what, where the two-way street is. Um, I'm a really big fan of this phrase, a rising tide lifts all boats. And it, it's kind of a personal, you know, drumbeat for me of thinking about, uh, as a person who's coming in to to rebuild this company and is super focused on on the resource we need, also making sure I'm taking the time to think about who's in the artistic community around me, who's in the non-artistic community around me, you know, uh, nationally as a field, right? and what is it that that I can provide? You know, I I love how I I hear so many folks talk about this sort of metric of um, scarcity and abundance. And I try and think about that and talk about that a lot with our staff here about, yeah, we're in these rebuilding years where there's this, there is this scarcity situation having, happening over here. But on the other side of that, on the abundant side of that, what do we have to offer? Which, um, which brings me to the second piece, which is, um, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to take this job was about the idea of, um, uh, shepherding a, a civic space. Um, I was saying this earlier, I, I am a director and I will continue to be a director. That's not why I wanted to be an artistic director. I wanted to be an artistic director to, uh, to be engaging in, in civic dialogue around, um, you know, th through the lens of art making. And particularly as we've been coming through this last week, I've been um, thinking a lot about that. And again, thinking about, uh, you know, for me relocating from New York, uh, the, I, we have this building. Uh, I mean, we don't really have this building. It's um, not actually ours, but, um, but we have this building enough that like, that's a way, that's a resource I can offer. And, you know, and that's something we've been thinking about in terms of community building um, in our neighborhood and in the city. Um, is uh, on a very simple level, making sure that the doors feel open in an authentic way. And then of course, you know, that's actually like pretty deep work, you know, like saying the doors are open is a fairly um, uh, passive statement. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> opening a door is not the same as um, interrogating what kind of door you have, like <laughs> making mm -hmm. sure, you know, that it's, uh, it, it, it actually feels open to other folks, you know? Um, so I know that's something that um, I'm really trying to uh, process and, and get some context around right now, because um, it's important to me to feel like there's a dialogue going on in here um, that can, 
can spark other other dialogue uh, once folks leave the leave the building. Uh, I, and I'll I'll leave it there. Cool. Thank you so much for that, Will. Really appreciate it. Say what? Dean, what? I'm sorry. Hi. Thank you, Will. <laughs> I'm just navigating. Uh, hosting this great. thing. Doing great. David, next. Uh, please, if you're there, go ahead. Okay. So let me know if I break up uh, and I will turn off the video and I'll just use the microphone. Um, well, uh, Kadamia has, has uh, operated fundamentally um, through two initiatives, which, which has been our bread and butter. It's like in football, run the ball straight up the middle or swing uh, right or swing left. So we produce main stage plays about the Latino experience in the United States. And then we have a variety of programs for youth that are taught and, and developed by our resident ensemble members. Upon re reflection, I, I look at what makes our organization or our company unique is that um, our, I, I, I identified four um, phrases and words that identify the cycle of our work. I would say that our work is, um, at, at first, is community building. I think through in this, our productions as well as our programs for youth involve community building. Um, through our season of plays. I would say that there's a level of self-discovery that takes place with our programs. There's a level of ceremony. Mm -hmm. And there is also another step of ecstasy that mm -hmm. our community and our artists experience. And I think that these four stages have been like a cycle and a spiral that has allowed us to grow with our audiences and our community. And uh, and we built from this passionate source. And, uh, and as we built from this, we've also begun as cultivated our um, transactional possibilities to generate revenue. However, it seems like this week we're, we're starting to break through from this spiral um, in, an, in another way. Uh, it seemed that our work was so community-based, so much centered on social and political issues, especially local issues, that we decided to hire uh, the first curator of community action. Mm. And this person would create um, events around all of our productions um, to uh, create conversations so that people could find a way to identify ways to act uh, civically and culturally in our community. Now, when we hired this person, we got more than we bargained for. We hired a, a civil rights and community organizer with over 40 years experience. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and so he was much more earnest, McMillan. Uh, uh, if you know Dafina McMillan, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dafina is his daughter. Um. And so Ernest is, um, has this, he's not, he's not only a, an educational dramaturg, He's not only capable of leading conversations and coordinating programs, but he has this facility, this lightning fast, lightning quick facility to bring people together and move precisely towards an issue and begin identifying plans of action. So he's only been with us for three months, but the, the, the possibilities of his interaction with the community are are great. And so we're at a point right now, we're actually at a great point of tradition, tr uh, transition as an organization, because we are assuming this role of, um, of artists who are engaged with issues in the real world. And um, Ernest is facilitating this, but it's also um, parallel to a lot of our own uh, initiatives as individual members of the company who are becoming more involved in uh, issues regarding housing, transportation, education mm -hmm. uh, in the city, and also arts in the neighborhoods, which are cultural deserts. So we're at a point right now where um, we don't know exactly how these, these community action initiatives are going to sustain themselves, but what we're seeing is this growth of a family of people who are involved in, in Karamia, 
and also involved in the community. And although I think we've broken through this spiral that we've survived by operating with for so long, I think that this is just becoming another step. So I guess instead of four steps, we are adding the step of community action. And um, I have faith in the goodwill of our community that we'll find ways to sustain it because I think everyone feels that we need it at this very moment. So, um, so we're in a liminal space right now where we don't really know uh, how this will all unfold, but we're being open and, and we're going to, you know, begin integrating these experiences of community action events into our uh, strategic plan over the next nine months. Great, thank you so much, David. Um, and thank you to all of the panelists, super inspiring stuff to hear from you. Um, yeah, lo lots of themes coming up for folks and just wanna name something that I'm hearing and something that I've heard a lot this past week is sort of this emphasis on um, the collective and on doing things together um, as opposed to sort of the individual or the ego or what have you. Just wanna name that. Um, let's take maybe 10 minutes to respond to each other. Um, does anyone have anything pressing that they'd like to name or respond to, you know, something that someone else said? You know, I, I felt a, a little um, prescriptive. I because I think that very complex. And so I, um, but I think that fundamentally that's what we're doing when, whenever we begin our, our activities, our seasons and our plays. So I, I wanted to, um, to, you know, refer to Mina's statement about the work that integrates the part of the, um, what, what builds community with, with Academy of Theater is that, is that um, we choose to interrogate uh, our ourselves and the and the society in which we live in, and um, and 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 do so boldly. And and um, and some people will tell us that we take risks, and they're really impressed with that. But I, I feel that that's inherent in what we do as theater artists. You know, a lot of the political people that come to see our work, the community people that come to see our work. They all appreciate this, the risks that we take, even though they may not identify them as artistic risks. So I think the question of interrogation is a, um, is a, is a vital aspect of what we do as artists. Mm -hmm. That's great. I, and I was really curious, David, in terms, that's so exciting in terms of um, having this new role within the staff and community action. I was wondering also so just so that I can learn what kinds of um, ideas are starting to formulate around community action specifically um, so that we can learn from those best practices and start to think about those out here as well. Well, what's, what's happening, well, so the way we began was to be very, um, uh, straightforward and, and, and not unlike what uh, most theaters are doing with the community engagement um, branch of the theater in which to deepen the understanding of the plays and its themes. We just, just wanted to turn the dial just one notch or a few notches by, by uh, calling it community action rather than just community engagement mm -hmm. so that the goal of our interaction with young people and with adults surrounding our plays um, involved identifying um, points of action mm -hmm. rather than just to leave a play um, contemplating ideas. So, um, so it's, you know, the, the early, you know, uh, panels and programs were really about delving into the themes. And then, for example, the last panel, the last program, the last play provides a lot of opportunities to talk about voting and becoming involved in organizations, advocate, advocacy, and activist organizations. Mm -hmm. what, what's starting to happen now is there is a, a growing synergy among um, artists and, and also advocates for other community interests right now. And we're, and also through um, 
the interests of each of the artists, we're actually starting to integrate um, and meet uh, uh, people who are dealing with affordable housing mm. and transportation and also how do we bring arts to the neighborhoods. And so this is, this is also something that is just, that is unforeseen actually, mm -hmm. but by the mere fact of having someone who is an organizer mm -hmm. as opposed to a dramaturg mm -hmm. or a, a trained theater artist or a, a, a scholar, but having an organizer in this role has created a magnet of they go directly to organizing as opposed to academic and literary ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and at first, it, and, and I would say, it, sometimes it feels a little overwhelming because, you know, we, it seems like we could be on the verge of becoming an organization that is organizing. Um, and so, but, but I think that there's a real care for the company. Mm -hmm. I think that the community that is involved with us understands our, our resources um, and understands our needs as well. So it's, we're still kind of in a learning process right now where we are bringing in, so for example, last past Saturday, I was in Atlanta, but this past Saturday, um, Ernest had a community conversation with some people who want to continue contributing to our community action events over the next year. And they all bring interests outside of just the arts, but they were very cognizant of our needs as an organization to sustain itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, there's a capacity for us to really move into supporting activist movements in, in town. That's great. Congratulations. That's exciting, exciting work. Yeah, super exciting to hear. Uh, any thoughts from Will? Or actually, specifically, what I would like to hear from Will, just sort of building on this community action thing, can you talk about the like meal that ATC just held like a couple days ago? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Wednesday morning, uh, I just uh, asked the staff um, to gather with me in the theater so we could do a little breathing together um, and just uh, uh, set some intentions for uh, ourselves and uh, for how we wanted to proceed really with the day and then with the week. Um, um, and we sat and had a really good conversation and what came out of that was again, you know, this, uh, it certainly it was something I felt and um, was uh, echoed back by the group, which is some sense of like, we, we need to provide something. We, I don't know what it is, but we need, we, we need to give something to our community. And um, we we're talking about it and it became clear that, you know, there are a lot of folks who are um, interested in participating in um, organizing and, um, uh, um, and make, you know, making some things happen. But in the short term, we could offer the space for conversation. So, um, you know, I sent out an, an e-blast that I really didn't think much of. I, I didn't think it was really going to cause much of a ripple that just said, we're here today. If you would rather be with somebody, if you would rather, you know, if you need to have a conversation, if you just want to stop by and sit down, um, we're here, come over. And, you know, we don't know what it is, but we're going to have an event on Friday. And I got this overwhelming amount of mail back saying, Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then, and then I also got a, ser a series of responses that were very angry, um, and that in itself was fascinating. Um, mm. uh, but anyway, so ultimately, what we decided to do is to host like a like a long table potluck conversation. Um, so we made a big long table in the theater, and we tried to, you know decorate the space, which seemed important to me. Uh, and uh, we invited folks um, to come and bring food and feed each other. Um, mm -hmm. And we had some some folks signing signing up who wanted to offer some body work. We had some folks who signed up to like do people's makeup. We had some folks who signed <laughs> up to, you know, give hand massages. Um, 
And a really amazing thing happened, uh, which is, I, I'm, I'm not saying it, it, it's, it's solving anything in any way, but, um, but uh, people just kept coming through the door all night. We, I was there until midnight, if not a little bit later, um, sitting and talking with folks who uh, just needed some fellowship, you know? Um, and so um, it felt like, uh, it didn't feel like it was a really wonderful space in which no one was being asked for money. I'm not trying to push any of my programming agendas. The, I, I'm trying to use the space as a civic space for the community to come in and have dinner with each other. Um, and uh, I'd like to do it again. And the thing that's been rattling through my head since Friday night is just this sense of, you know, it, I'm really getting the sense from the other folks on the panel, and I think this is probably a value that many of us share, that, you know, we're, we're interested in how, how we can be agents for change in small ways and big ways. And um, after Friday night, I was thinking about, well, you know, one of the things that I think was happening, I was listening to people starting to organize themselves with each other about, you know, I can provide you this, I can do this, I know about this thing, you know, here's a list of resources for this. And there are also just people giving each other hugs. <laughs> but I was thinking about uh, this idea of, yeah, change through fellowship, the idea that, you know, there's, there's change that certainly like I want us as a company to be thinking about and spearheading. And then there's also the change that hopefully will, uh, we can just be um, uh, a seeding ground, a, a planting space for, you know, that um, because of your intersection here in the theater, um, you have uh, tools and resources, you know, from a small thing to maybe a larger thing to uh, leave and participate in your community or just, you know, have, have a friend. Um, so, yeah, I, there was just some, I will just, the last thing I'll say is there was just something so striking about everyone coming together to feed each other that I know for me as a person who is thinking a lot about the communities I identify with and belong to, thinking about how we are a, a powerful group of, of people who can take care of each other and um, honestly, defend each other um it was it was really incredible to be in that room and um hold space for um comfort on a basic level yeah cool thank you for that will um yeah I think, you know it's a really uh unique time we're in right now you know and i hear mina and david and will talking about intersectionality and allyship and connection and relationships on macro levels, I mean macro levels and micro levels as well, sort of the interpersonal, as well as the s systemic, you know, you've got like Katamiya Theater working with an organizer, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is just like really amazing. And I also wanna lift up, um, well, and you, you know, you have like, right will being like we have this building let's eat together right there is a clearly this like very present need for folks to connect um yeah and i also just want to lift up i know this is maybe like moving backwards a little bit but something that i'm really inspired by that mina did was co-direct the shipment you know with uh with another director whose identity represented you know the really what the show was exploring, the identities that the show was exploring. And I just think this sort of idea of like shared power and, and, and reaching out and connecting with, with people in that respect um, is, uh, is a thrust that is gonna move us forward from this moment. Um, so yeah, I, I wanna like open it up to the internet. I also want to like maybe create more space to you know, directly talk about this past week. And, um, you know, a lot of stuff has come up about flexibility and about change and, um, I don't know, interrogating this door, as Will says, you know, M Mina mentioned authenticity. Um, 
you know, there's this idea that small to mid-sized theaters can be flexible. They can move fast and respond to what's going on in our world. Is that true? And what, what do we do right now? Hard question. Tough question. Well, I, I just, one small thing I want to say is that, um, you know, as I'm transitioning into this job and um, going through this experience of, you know, this first year, uh, I've been, <laughs> it's been explained to me that I'm not going to start to make my own mistakes until next year. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, um, one, of the, one of the things that, I'm actually trying to keep as a very like precious thing is is my ignorance about the institutional workings and I, I'm trying to uh, do what I'm always trying to do but expand the net which is is um, live my ethics through my art um, and uh, continually thinking about you know I'm, I'm trying to recenter this company around um, a few a, a few uh, of those ethics based questions and ideas and um, and just continually remembering and thinking about you know what's at the top of the list like what are those what are those three things at the top of the list that like uh, must be obeyed you know um, I know uh, many of us are very excitingly um, talking a lot about uh, inclusivity. Um, I'm finding that sort of a new rising tide lifts all boats moment, you know, and then because we're saying that there's, you know, this uh, added responsibility of um, what actually we're talking about and what and what in what ways are we actually uh, providing that in interrogating our definitions of that, you know, uh, and continually uh, striving um, to do to do more and do better you know um, but I so it, uh, the reason I'm saying all of this in response to this um, flexibility question is that I, so far I, I'm I'm finding that very much to be true that um, in this first year uh, that there is there is the ability for us to uh, quickly respond to something um, because the team is at such a size and I mean, you know, you know, myself, the staff, the board are sort of, you know, extended ATC community. We are, we are small enough that we, uh, <laughs> on a simple level, we can, I can send an email that will get to everyone and we can all decide to turn left, you know, mm -hmm. that there's like, there's, um, there's a, a space there and, and I think, uh, an energy there that is this like scrappy smaller sense that um no matter what you know we got to do more with less and that makes us nimble in a way i think um because it, that you know doing more with less requires that, that your creative thinking your creative problem solving is um being like you know engaged daily i mean I just pulled all the carpet out of this office with my two hands, you know, like, <laughs> no, like small stuff and big stuff. But I feel like, yeah, I, I absolutely can. We can, um, we can affect big change because, because we're flexible. Cool. Thank you, Mina. Yeah. I, um, the day after the election, I was on a plane to New York because Crowded Fire is part of the uh, theater communications group. Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Institute, which um, I believe you are all as well, maybe. Um, and uh, one of the one of the themes of the conversation was how do we shift value? What is value? Um, who defines value? Who sits mm -hmm. high in the power structure um, to set those parameters? And how much, especially as we think of our boards and um, the people that are um, hiring in leadership, uh, how they're, and the foundations and the people who are in the philanthropy circle, how are they determining value? And over the last several decades, it's been so much about sustainability, you know, growth, 
um, pr product, you know, in terms of the art, and it's been it's been held in this very capitalistic structure. And I think one big, more of a like a large piece that I'm thinking about is how do we band together and shift the definition of value? How do we shift it to relationship? Because um, community and lateral conversations, you know, and holistic conversations are actually what has the power potentially to move us out of the space we've just found ourselves in. Um, or it has existed and ha is now visible to us and is going to be exacerbated. So um, that has been in my mind um, a lot in the last several days. And thinking about leadership, um, how drastically leaders change in leadership can make a difference, um, mm. uh, including for our country, including for our, our institutions, our organizations. Um, and when we hire in people who um, who are people of color, trans, queer, you know, people who have immigrant families, people who have the experience of, um, in many cases, otherness um, up until now, um, are going to be the people who set us forth as we head to 2044 when we are going to, we are already a majority here in California, but we will be, we will be a majority. And I think, you know, this, push pull is what we're going to be fighting. Um, so I think about those two two things and then on a very um, on a very um, uh, immediate level in response, I think it's like what kind of art coalition building can we be doing in the circles we move in like we just did every 28 hours across this country. We did it with Berkeley Rep, ACT, Crowd of Fire, Lorraine Hansgren, Campo Santo. And that was an incredibly moving event where theaters of all sizes came together. And why isn't that happening on a more regular basis? Um, and you know, all it all it takes is someone to say yes, actually. Um, and I wonder, like, how that's going to play out in the next couple months. I know we're going to be doing hands up seven uh, playwright seven testaments on Friday night as part of our Matchbox reading series, and it's. It was, you know, something to talk about. Like, it's not a play in development, but so what? And then, like, what do we need? What what matters? So, these different elements can really come together towards that wave of change. Yeah, thank you. I want to just lift up something <laughs> Nina just said, and something that everyone is, you know, I, I feel like so much um, is being said in this conversation that needs to be like, you know, given space. Um, but just this idea of valuing, you know, the lived experience of otherness, you know, within the structures of theaters, uh, of theaters, theater companies. Um, you know, I organize with Lisa Evans a lot, and we talk about, we're like circling around this idea of impact, you know. We're sort of, it feels like we're stuck on like representation just in the art, but not necessarily like in positions of power and in the way we share power, and how we're structured, right? And that relates to like the makeup of the company and how it functions. It relates to like what kind of art we're putting on. And it relates to interrogating the door, right? There's so much, I think, beyond just the art that, um, that maintains sort of systems of oppression, you know, and, and white supremacy in our structures, just to name it. Um, we have a question from the internet which I will first pose to David, because I feel like we're, um, he hasn't gotten space in a minute. Um, so the question is, what are you sharing with your emerging artists about the way forward? Mm. And we've got maybe 15 minutes left on this call. Well, uh, I think that, um, you know, like I said, we're in a, in, in a period of transition and, um, you know, as I was listening to the, the conversations, um, uh, listening to the discussion, uh, I am thinking about this past week. I thought about some of the, the the challenges that we're having as a company at this point of our transition. Um, I think that there, I'm listening, and as a as a director of a small company, um, it's so valuable for me to company, and, um, and sometimes they're tough. And especially when an organization like ours is taking on um, this, I, 
this, uh, this capacity for community action and what that means to the art. Um, so, but uh, you know, I, but I, when I look at, um, you know, this past week, I feel that actually our community is depending on us to provide these sorts of, uh, the, these, these actions, these, or this, or this capacity to reflect and hold space for discussions. So I, I think that it's been very interesting for me because I, I think that what, what we're, we're, we're seeing, this has been a year of transitions, I think, in so many ways, in so many levels. And, and I think that what's happening within our organization is that we're seeing younger people become integrated into our company. And, and so we have a, a process in which uh, we have three levels of awareness, which as performers, which is the first level is myself as an individual. The second level is the constellation of the ensemble. And the third level is the space that includes the audience. And um, we've begun talking about that in terms of our relationship in the world, um, that we are conscious of ourselves and of our own personal needs, personal needs of our family and community, and then of the world. And um, it, it, seems to, it seems to be very profound in these times because uh, it, it seems like we cannot afford to not be uh, conscious of that third level of awareness, which is the world. So I, I would say that our, the younger generation of, of artists that are that we're teaching in schools and high schools, as well as working with the college age, that are really um, uh, um, uh, immersing themselves in this sort of vision. And that's what we're offering. Cool. Anyone else want to jump in on that one? I, uh, I'm trying to offer as many free things as I'm capable of. Um, tonight uh, will be the last in what has been 10 weeks of free artist residencies here. Um, and uh, next year I got to write a grant for it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it, it's the way I wanted to start my tenure here was um, in providing uh space for expression with as with as as um with you know no gates <laughs> no gate keeping um and we've had a really tremendous run of um folks who are early on in their craft um folks who are uh trying something new you know we've had um some some folks have had residencies who are well known in this community as actors who have written a play for the first time and wanted to work on it. You know, it's a, one of the things I'm trying to recenter the company around is process and um, the value of process, um, the value of sharing process, uh, and you know, uh, making sure that we're lifting that up, like outside of a sort of capitalistic system of getting something done. You know, um, but instead thinking about um, what it means to prize swimming in the, in the question. Um, and one of the things that's been powerful for me is uh, over 50% of the people who have come in the doors in the last 10 weeks have never been in this building before. Um, and having the opportunity to say uh, to as many people as possible, uh, come in, let me know what you need. Let me know how you know uh, I, I can participate, or this company can participate in, in fulfilling that, um, and trying to at, trying to make sure that I'm as loudly as possible saying to the community, uh, you know, what's mine is yours. I I don't I don't have, the kingdom's not so big right now, but like uh, if it's here, you can have it. You know. Um, so a uh, part of that is me coming off of three years of freelancing and um, wishing for a little more um, low pressure space to um, try scary things and work on new things. And another part of it is, you know, I really am excited to see how we as a field are starting to expand our definition of what the theater is. Mm. Uh, 
and maybe more importantly, starting to expand um, the structures of storytelling we're working in and just the structures of performance making that we're working in. And I think some of that um, includes uh, uh, includes social justice work and includes, you know, uh, nonlinear concepts of time and space. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I, I'm just hopeful that what we're providing here is a, um, continues to be a free platform of mentorship for folks who want to come in and work on something with themselves and for folks who want to come in and work on something with something else with someone else you know so um that's you know that's i'm just uh thinking on that today because today today's the end of that residency and i'm i'm excited to see what what happens with those projects i'm excited to 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 understand if if in fact it's had, it, it will have an impact on those artists and that work this year as those, as those pieces move forward. Cool, thanks for that, Will. Um, so we have one more question from uh, someone watching live on HowlRound, which by the way, we've given y'all like no love. Hello, oh. thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, anyone is open to fielding this and then we'll close out. The question is, um, any advice for people trying to start a new company? Hmm. I think um, gather around you the people uh, who are varied in all kinds of skills and perspectives. Um, keep that circle big enough, but not too tight <laughs> either. Uh, and I think it's just about resilience, like continue to find process. I love the idea of process and whatever the work is that you're trying to build. Um, I remember sitting around a table with six other people like 12 years ago. We were like, how do you start a theater company? I don't know. We like had little index cards about our vision. Um, and then now, 12 years later, it's a $2 million company, which is insane. Um, but, you know, we were painting in my garage. <laughs> we were calling on all of our family and friends to help. Uh, we knew that we needed a board of people who would support us and provide us with good advice um, from all walks of life, educators, um, you know, people who were, who were in the corporate sphere, but also nonprofit sphere was important. Um, trying to find your mentors that are close geographically to you so you can ask really specific questions about how to proceed. Um, and I think hone in on what your mission is. What kind of work as a group are you really interested in doing so that you're all on the same page as you move forward and then that will organically shift. Um, but at least you'll have that, that start as far as vocabulary find out from other small theater companies around you that have been around for maybe three years, what kind of funding sources that they've reached out to. I think people are way more willing to share um, if you ask. So call up lots of people for coffee. Um, I've had a lot of coffee. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Thank you. Anyone else on that question? Oh, we lost David. Wow. Okay. Well, we've got just like a few more minutes left. Uh, I wanted to say just returning a little bit to like the emerging artist question and just share that I was at, uh, you know, I was at a protest in downtown Oakland on Wednesday night and there was a rally first and it was a lot of different sort of you know, organizers coming together. I think there were over 7,000 people. That's at least what the news said. And I've been to a lot of protests this past <laughs> year. And um, this one, w I, I feel like I saw different faces. And I also saw a lot of young people there. Um, and one thing that the organizers did, which just like brought me to tears, the symbolic meaning was so, uh, you know, deep and impactful was they invited all the young people or the people with kids to come to the front and had those folks lead this march of 7,000 people. Yeah, and it was, it was really, really incredible. So 
Um, I just want to like name that like you're worthy and you're worthy of leading us right now, even in this very moment. And a lot of times, uh, I think young people get told that and then like there isn't any backup or there isn't any follow up. But uh, but but I do think there's like a really unique opportunity right now to be to be heard and your voice is super valuable. So I don't know. SK just wants to put that out there um, as well. Yeah. Did you want to add something? Sorry. No, that <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. It's real. And, you know, like. The news right now, in at least in the Bay Area, is that like high school students are walking out on the daily to protest, right? It's really, really powerful. Um, so snaps to that. Um, I have a, I have like a little closeout thought, but um, and I guess we, David, is no longer on the call or in the panel. Um, but if Mina and Will, you have any last thoughts you want to share or anything you want to, you know. I, I want to say one small thing, which is just, you know, actually to bring this uh, full circle back to uh, resources, um, conversations like this, I think, are, are so wonderful. You know what Nina was saying uh, earlier about sharing and, um, and many people's interest in sharing. I, I just want to, like, echo that I completely agree with that and think it's really true and that, you know, uh, we as a field have a lot of potential, I think, um, I, uh, a lot more potential than we are accessing right now mm -hmm. to share with each other, uh, skill share, resource share, and also band together and make projects together. You know, like that's, um, that's something that I am, uh, hoping to work on more in my tenure at ATC and um, very interested in, in trying to promote a little bit more in the field that, um, that I think that uh, we have an incredible opportunity uh, with, you know, the continual curtail of arts funding to think about how we can work with each other and how we can offer things to each other. Um, so I think, uh, I just, for me, a closing thing is to say, you know, um, just a slightly broader version of what I was saying before, which is uh, I want ATC to be a, like a very accessible space to um, the folks here in the Chicago community, but also the folks broadly nationally. Um, it would be a real pleasure to um, to be of some service, you know. So write me a note. I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Will. How about you, Mina? Um, I'm going to um, try to encapsulate something Carmen Morgan, who is one of the folks who runs the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Institute, said that really touched me in the last couple days, um, is that she's been an activist. I mean, she's been on the border. She's been in the cities. She's done a lot of frontline um, direct community action and organizing. And she said... There's that and demonstration. There has been policy change. And the reason why she's working in the arts with artists now is the power of the narrative and the stories and the representation we put out there have the ability to change how someone deeply values or feels about something. Um, and it's not just a passing empathy, it's actually a behavior shift. And, um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about, like, is, is the art I do enough? Um, it's a real question right now. And that made me realize that it's more than enough. And we each have what we can give. Um, another community organizer and I said, get in where you fit in. And we each have our own truths and our own frame and our own experience, and we just need to get in there. Um, and the arts have a great value. As long as we don't stay insular, we have to get out. Um, so th that's like just my passing thought to the people, you all, who are going to be leading us in now. <laughs> yeah, that's what Nina said. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, Thank you so much.
to you both. I'm going to give a quick shout out. Thank you to American Express for uh, the supporting this and same to the Bay Tree Fund. And I want to give a, a deep, deep thank you to Mina and Will and David. Uh, you know, the work y'all do is, is, you know, I, I don't know if I can like convey this moment, but I just want to like, I know leadership can sometimes be lonely and you don't get told that you're doing a good job. And like from a personal place, like I know the work of, of all three of you and you're doing a really good job. So thank you. We need you right now. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching everyone.